My name is Claudio Borghi. I'm professor of medicine and I'm working for the University of Bologna. The topic of my presentation would be the hypertension and the common comorbidities. Hypertension is certainly the most important risk factor for cardiovascular disease. But usually, hypertension comes rarely alone without any additional diseases. In most hypertensive patients, we see we have several comorbidities that affect the cardiovascular risk profile and the treatment strategies. It's important because the number of comorbidities in the hypertensive population is increasing with age, with the duration of hypertension, and in particular with the emerging clinical complexity we are going to see every day in our hypertensive patients. Currently, I think that a lot of energy has been spent to treat hypertension to improve the blood pressure control, but the management of the comorbidities is still insufficient, and some of them are not usually treated in the right way. For this reason, I think that in a modern approach to hypertension, common and uncommon comorbidities should be identified in the hypertensive patient and they should be managed according to the best available evidence, like any guidelines would suggest. Uh, when we talk about the comorbidities in the hypertensive patient, I think we have to distinguish between the common and the uncommon comorbidities. The common comorbidities are probably those that everybody of us knows, which are directly related to the negative impact of high blood pressure, and there are include coronary artery disease, stroke and cerebrovascular disease in general, chronic kidney disease, heart failure, pulmonary disease, and in some low-income country, the HMV and AIDS infection. On the other side, most important are probably the emerging uncommon comorbidities that are including mainly the rheumatic or the chronic inflammatory diseases and the psychiatric diseases. Uncommon comorbidities are usually underestimated in the general evaluation of the hypertensive patient, are usually underestimated by the available guideline, and often they are treated with some prescribed drugs that frequently are going to interfere with the hypertensive treatment. Oh, let's say to see uh, which are the common comorbidities in the hypertensive patient. I think the most important comorbidities should be treated according to some common and well-known therapeutic strategies that are closely depending on the cardiovascular risk profile of the patient, and they are including lifestyle changes, and in particular diet, exercise, body weight, and, and uh, uh, cessation of smoking. Of course, we have to treat blood pressure in a very effective way, try to achieve the targets which are suggested by any guidelines in patients with hypertension. At the same time, since most of these comorbidities are involving additional risk factors, it's very important that these additional risk factors are treated in the right way. And in particular, in the hypertensive patient, we should manage LDL cholesterol and all the abnormalities of the lipid profile the glucose profile, and recently many evidence are supporting the importance of managing serum uric acid. At the same time, since most patients have some kind of atherosclerotic and prothrombotic disease, the antithrombotic treatment seems to be very important in the average treatment of the common comorbidities affecting the hypertensive population. For the uncommon comorbidity, the comorbidities, the situation is pretty much more difficult. The situation is more difficult for the, these kind of comorbidities since for many of them, we don't have any dedicated randomized clinical trial, and we have to rely on single population studies or reg registries considering as a main support to recommendation the characteristic of the patient and the blood pressure lowering drugs and the nature of the concomitant treatment. According to the prevalence of uncommon comorbidities, in these guidelines, we have decided to focus on the rheumatic disease and the inflammatory disease in general, and on the psychiatric disorders. In terms of treatment of hypertension in patients with rheumatic disease, I think the, the treatment with the renin angiotensin system inhibitors and calcium channel blocker 
uh, in combination with the diuretics maybe could be the best solution according to the activation of the renin angiotensin system we see in this population of patients. At the same time, I think the biological treatment that are currently used in these patients usually do not affect the blood pressure. It can be used in every country where they are available. On the other side, we have to pay a lot of attention to the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which are currently used in these patients, and that can be given to patients with hypertension if they deserve it only at low doses. As far as the treatment of the psychiatric disorders, which seems a very important uh, uh, emerging problem, again, the drug inhibiting the renin angiotensin system and the diuretics seems to be the best solution since they don't interfere with the, uh, let's say, drugs which are currently used for these patients. The beta blocker should be used only in a limited population of patients, in particular avoiding metoprolol, which is able to get into the brain. And they should be uh, considered only in those patients in which the antipsychiatric drug can cause tachycardia. At the same time, lipid lowering drug and anti diabetic drug for the treatment of the uh, concomitant diseases can be uh, uh, deliberately used. In terms of warning, I think it's important to avoid the calcium channel blocker whenever it's possible because they can interfere with the pharmacokinetic of antipsychiatric drugs and they can cause orthostatic hypertension in, combina in combination with antidepressive drug. So this is a very important topic. I think it's one of the news of these uh, guidelines. And I think what we have to do is try to focus uh, much more on the problem of comorbidities, just try to reduce the overall risk of hypertensive patients.